Speaking to the mic, Corey. Hello. Pretty well, I'll do that and just brief. All set. Do you want to get the glasses? We're already live for it. We're already live, live for it. Hello there. Welcome to the Mead and Cheese After Show. With me, DJ Mead. And so here, just on camera. Uh, never set up myself. Always set up. There you go, I'm here. Uh, I'm always good clarity because I've pulled the quality on Corey today. Um, so I'm video producing this one. Uh, but look how like, nice of course lighting shot is compared to mine. Like he looks so pretty compared to me. Um don't know how well you can hear me either, <laughs> but uh, I know we're picking up levels. Yeah. Uh, I think this is gonna be a pretty interesting one because sh show them what we've got, Tom. So I just hand this so this is what we've got. Uh, this is a mead. I'm just gonna hand that over to you quickly. So we don't actually think it is a mead. Uh, we think it's a Romanian white wine, but we, we've discussed on the show the difference between mead and honeyed wine, because a lot of the time people use them as terms that are interchangeable for each other. But this, according to Google Translate, is a white wine that has been sweetened with honey, making this a honeyed wine and not a mead. So, um, I'm very excited to try it. And I think DJ Cheese is also very excited to try it. Because I don't think we've ever had a honey wine before, have we? No. Always, and we'll do this nice and slow. It, oh, it's got a, oh, it's a cork, isn't it? It is, it's a cork. Right, that, that might be a bit difficult. That's why we didn't open it on the show. And let's hope we can open it today, because I don't know if I've got an opener. We might not have an opener. We may not be trying the wine tonight. Uncivilised method. We may have to smash the top of the glass on a wall to get into the mead. Tom, don't don't open it like that. That caused a mess last time. Yes, it did. Why do you not have a corkscrew? Oh, you see, this is how you know it's not a mead and it's a wine, because no mead comes with a cork in it. So we are just waiting for DJ Cheese to open the bottle, <laughs> because we didn't prep for this, really. We prepped the, the setup, the camera and the lighting, which looks very good, all thanks to um, the help from our partner's Dream Visual. You know, our partner's Dream Visual didn't think to bring a cork No. No. I bet... Um, Jim Shepherd, CEO of Hoist Lemonade, would have brought a he corkscrew. Have his keys. Yeah. Do I have one on my keys? I'll have a look. No, oh! Oh! Well, that's not I have um, this Manx key ring. We could try this. Is it a corkscrew? No. Than what I've got. It might. <laughs> Should we wait until we have a corkscrew? You're in. Oh? 
we may have something here. We may actually be able to try the sweet honey wine. Yeah. Oh, you've knocked the cork into the drink. We won't make things very different. We're going to have cork fragments. No, we're not. They have pushed it in. This smells. Oh, it smells like wine. Smells like a white wine. Smells like a wine. But um, I'll let you do the first sip, Tom. Yeah. But I'm a wine person. A bit like a. Uh... That is nice. Mhm. Mm but it's a wine. Okay. Let me let me have a have a taste. Well, it's a very nice wine, though. Yeah. It's it is sweet. Not as sweet as a mead, but it definitely has been sweetened, you can tell. Yeah. Like it's a, like mm. if you want wine instead of mead, then go for this. Or maybe, yeah. If you like mead and you can't get hold of any mead, because we know mead is very difficult to get your hands on. We got this from the uni off license. Just off DMU campus, it was six pounds, wasn't it? Yeah, it was very, very, very cheap. Very cheap. You go to um, a shop like Twenty Three Wine and Whiskey, you're looking at least twelve pounds for a mead. Yeah, yeah, you you are. Um, I think in terms of this, it's not mead. It's not mead. It's but but it feels more like mead than some of the meads we've had. Yeah, I think the thing is what we're looking at is, um, is it something that you could enjoy? I am pretty, pretty set on honey wine. I advocate for this Romanian honey wine. Would you count it as a mead? It's not a mead because it's made with grapes and not honey. Yeah, it's, not, but it's a bit. It's it's like a hybrid, isn't it? Well, it's yeah, it's honey wine. It's not mead. But then some of the meads you buy are probably not pure meads. Yeah. So I think the definition of this is, is you know is always. Um, Here's a question for you: If you were going to put this on our mead leaderboard, where would you rank it? Uh, oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not certain where I personally would rank this. Mm. I wouldn't put it on the mead leaderboard. You wouldn't put it on the mead leaderboard? I, would, I, would put it on the... I think this is sweeter than, say, like the Nidhogger mead. And the Nidhogger mead is a very nice mead, but it, it doesn't have the sweetness of, like, the Lime Bay. So. So the difference between this and actual mead is when you taste it, just take a sip. Yeah, yeah. And I want you to try and think of this. I don't think it feels as syrupy as mead would. No, it doesn't feel as syrupy. I'd say it's probably drier than mead as well. Yeah, it's more like a... It does feel like a white wine, but with a slight honey kick. I think if the honey kick was a bit more, then I would possibly put it higher on the... Mead and cheese board. I really like this though. This would have a home on my wine rack. Yeah. Well, for sure. I think, I think that's the UK position to have. Mm. But, um, yeah. Yeah. As uh, Kira McCavanagh would say, don't make me come for you, but do come for this honey wine. Yeah, like, if you want something that's like me, and you can't mm. find anything, go for that. Like. Yeah, Andy Roberts today, he said, if you can't drink rum, drink mead. Well, if you can't drink mead, drink honey wine. Perfect. Yeah. That was quite mm. the mic. You can borrow the mic. I think, like... Everyone like that. That blow. I'm just trying to figure out if the audio is coming out of its mic or not. Um, 
It's, it's coming through anyway, so it doesn't matter. I was doing it. Is it recording it straight off of your laptop? Recording it, going straight to our YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it should be coming out. Hi, Evan. <laughs> <laughs> our our first patron. But, like, this is... I, talk, I, I love talking about myself. Like, mm. this is a new A7S. An A7S yeah. Like, and like, you can tell the clarity on this image is a lot better than the webcam. Or even like my own older camera, mm. which is a lot nicer. Yeah. Like I did, I haven't done much with light in here. I've only just put up the camera, plugged it in. And this will probably be a bit more like the look of the future of medium cheese. We need to figure out I think, if we're having like a this a the gentleman's club now. Now we're this this is the gentleman's club yeah. right now, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I feel like the future of meat and cheese, obviously, we'll keep going with the audio-only podcast, which is up on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, and Google. But for our YouTube setup, and just for the podcast as well, I feel like once we're not allowed in the Demon FM studio, we might go through a bit of a period where we're not really sure what we're doing. Mm. Yeah, I, I think it's one of them things where uh, yeah, I'm a bit worried that I wasn't being able to have. Um, yeah. I, I agree, like, once once we lose our thing in 2023, yeah. I think we will have some form of studio, but I'm not sure what that will be yet, because it depends on how well we do over the next... Um, year or so. Well, you know they're renting out office space in Sutton and Ashfield. So, <laughs> <laughs> if we wanted to set up a studio there, set up the studio. and then we could we could rent it out to aspiring podcast makers in Sutton and Ashfield. Maybe not in Sutton and Ashfield, but I think somewhere we need. Uh, I think we need a city-based location. I think we need somewhere cheap, and Sutton will be cheap. Because Sutton is very hard to get to. Not by train, but with the train strikes going on, yeah. Uh, I don't know. You could get to Sutton easily. It, it would cost, it costs me about £9 on the train. We need, I think we need to be the city centre. Then we got a better market for renting it out to the people. Yeah, but it costs three pounds to get the train from from Nottingham to Sutton, and it costs about three pounds on the bus as well, I believe. So, if you were to set up in Sutton, you would probably have some people from Nottingham and Mansfield come in as well. It will cost. There, everything. Look, you need it in walking distance, so it does. You've been walking distance for me. <laughs> Provided my house doesn't burn down in Sutton, it'd be in walking distance for me. Nottingham's a nice middle ground between Sutton and Leicester as well. That is the big market of people you can get on the pod. What about Loughborough? I'm a bit against Loughborough because it's not a great city. It's not a big city, no, but it's in Leicestershire. It's right between Nottingham and Leicester, so you'd probably have people from both of those cities come use it, provided we rented it out for cheap enough. But my main thing would be using it as a multimedia facility. Yeah, yeah, because you know you could use it for for your dream visual, for hoist lemonade. I could use it for sea caps. Yeah, anything like um, and and uh, and naturally, I think other ideas will be born there. You know, like mm. one just the really pre-existing ideas. Um, I also think like if you had set it up right, you set up like a facility, like a bit like the FM studio. Yeah. Which, yeah, I feel like you need like a creative room where you can just like build backdrops in, you know, do whatever you want, and then you need like a. Would we set up a green screen? Um. Yeah. So you you would have that in like, I would say, your studio sort of slash creative room. Mm. 
which is basically you can do product videos, anything you want. And then in room two will be a lot more set always. Mm. And, and that will be like more uh, like podcast studio. Yeah. Uh, the reason I want it set is because I wouldn't want to waste time setting up every time we go in. Like I want it always there permanently. I'll say this. The Demon FM studio, how that's set up, just invites conversation. Yeah. Mm. I want it. Obviously, we would have our own drink facilities there. I'd, I'd have microphones that track people so that they follow them. Because you are quite bad for forgetting to talk into the mic. <laughs> um, we could also permanently have cameras in there as well, so you don't have to set up the camera like that. You could have a yeah. on PC, what's always set up for the OBS live stream. Yeah, yeah. Something we're always set up for our online. You could have PCs in there. It'd be a big investment, of course. It but, would, um, yeah. It, you could like, make it really... You just got to think of it like in saving time as well. Mm. And then, like, if anyone else we know wants a show in there, bang, they've got a place to do their show. And they could just book it with us. I, I would love to start a media empire because I know that when, once I finish uni, I'm really going to miss being involved with Demon Media. So, um, let's talk about then. So, you're doing your masters in international film structure. Yes, that's so, correct chairperson mm-hmm. of DM Media. So that is like being in charge of a form of big media organisation. It's it's le- it's better than being in charge of the Murdoch Press, I would say. Oh, yeah. It's bigger. Yeah. A lot bigger. We've got Mead and Cheese. Yeah. We've got, you know, the Your Boy show. We've got the Ed show. We've got um, the Voice of Poles. And we, we have Torin Fahey. Sky News doesn't have Torin Fahey. Big organisation. So, mm. you have a big organisation. You can't do everything yourself, but you can. If you do it right, you can have the momentum to do some really great things that you couldn't just do on your own. Yeah. And following from the leadership of Lord Thomas Jackson, you know, he had a really great year as chairman and. Following in his footsteps, I think it's going to be very difficult, but I'm also up to the challenge. I would like to see how I can follow on from what he did, but also differentiate myself. Yeah. It's like, at the end of the day, you're not the same person as me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even if we have similar values, there's always going to be differences. And I think that's always really interesting for someone to watch um, as you know, you see someone else do something different and it's always, and um, I really want to want to sort of, and I'm really excited for what this new committee and your new team can do. Cause that's, mm. like, there's, you know, so many interesting things. And like, I sometimes talk to Maddie about some bits of demon, not to a great extent, but like the things what I'm hearing are very exciting. Going back to the honey wine, the reason we started this live stream, is this something you would recommend the students of DMU go by? To be honest, I would recommend first you can get a bottle of mead. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't get this expecting it to be me because it's more it's more of a white wine. Um, mm-hmm. If you like white wine, you're a student who likes white wine and you want to say transition to mead or try something that might be a bit more like mead, or you like mead and you like white wine, then go for this. Yeah, I'd recommend first getting a bottle of mead. Because what I will say is the uni off-licence is right on campus. So it's in an ideal location for students to just nip in and get themselves a bottle of honey wine for, let's be honest, a really good price, £6, for a bottle of wine that is really nice. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, it's not like I wouldn't recommend it. I'm saying, like... You wouldn't recommend it. For people who are expecting mead. Yeah, I think... Yeah. Like, had, not. That, that's the problem you could get with us recommending people get this, is they, they drink this and they expect mead to be like this. Yeah. Which is not mead, totally different. It's like different textures. But then, meads can be quite different from each other. Like, Lime Bay mead is nothing like Nidhogger mead. Yeah, yeah, I get that. 
I would actually suggest we start with Lime Bay Mead. I, I would suggest starting with Lime Bay Mead as well. It seems to be the most standard mead. Mm-hmm. Um, when we had the Cornish Mead Co's Heligan Original Mead, or the Chalice Mead, they have both tasted very similar to what Lime Bay's mead is. Mm-hmm. Whereas there are some other meads that are very different, like Nidhogger is very different to a lot of traditional meads that doesn't taste as sweet. And then you've got Moon Honey Mead, which is more of a modern twist on mead. They're trying to turn that into more of a beer. Yeah. Yeah, I think, like, I mean, I, I would also, I, if I was to recommend two meads to start off on, I'd probably say Lime Bay and Moon Honey myself. I think Moon Honey feels like a mead that should be sold in shops. Yes, it does. I think they've done amazing things with their brands. Um, Nidhogger as well is a very nice mead. Um, it feels at home with like a gin, I would say. Yeah, I mean, that really is the yeah, aspect of the account. Like, um, with mead, you've got Moon Honey, you've got Lime Bay, you've got Nick Hogger, you've got, um, what is the other one? Uh, Heligan Garden Mead, which is the very one. The Heligan Garden Mead was beautiful. One's mm. like a gin, one's more like a beer, one's more like a red one. The Kinzale Mead that we got was the most like gin. Because when we first tried that, we didn't like it. We thought it wasn't very nice. And then when we started mixing it with things like tonic and lemonade, we realised that actually, as a mixer, it's really nice. It's just not nice on its own. Like gin. Do you know what I think? An issue with it. Go on. The fact that there is loads of meads. Yeah. People always expect meads one drink. That's the thing. Like, even... Even Harvest Gold. I don't like Harvest Gold. I've been very open about that on our show for a, a while. But there will be someone out there who likes Harvest Gold, and that will be the mead for them. Yeah, um, I definitely think there's someone out there. I, I, to, to, be, to be honest, I heard my sister, she likes Harvest Gold, and they took Harvest Gold mead to a festival recently. Mm. Um and that's what they like. They like Harvest Gold. Me, they don't think it's that bad. You look on Amazon, and Harvest Gold is twelve pounds, just as much as like a Lime Bay. Five No. But again, if you're someone who likes more of a dry drink, because Harvest Gold was more dry than other meads we've had, and it it, it wasn't. It still had the honey flavour, but it definitely tasted. Very alcoholic. Did you ever think Harvest Gold tasted cheap? Yeah, I think so. But I think there are people who like that taste. Mm-hmm. Well, I felt I felt that way with Harvest Gold, and that's all. I enjoy, I didn't mind. I didn't. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate mm-hmm. it. I'm not going to say I didn't. But I I, I appreciate it being a mead and Morrison, but I didn't. Really, like I wouldn't want it necessarily every night. But me, no. excite you. I think that's the thing. Like you look at the Nidhogger, that is a very different mead to like a Lime Bay, but that doesn't taste cheap. Mm. It tastes very different. Doesn't taste cheap, and it's not cheap. It's probably it's more expensive than Lime Bay as a mead. And we were actually speaking to the owner of Nidhogger to get him on our show. And he put up a post on Facebook saying that, um, you know, with everything going on with the cost of living crisis, he may be forced to put his prices up. But all meads got up in price. Yeah. Because um, Lime Bay went from price uh, from £8.99 to £12 mm. something. Um, which obviously it went up around. It went up, got up twice. It went. It was eight pounds, then it went up to tw- twelve or fourteen pounds. Yeah, went back down again for a bit, and then obviously the cost of living crisis. I mean, probably went back up sometime around there. But I've not seen no. it at eight pounds. It's a good while, like right? no, you know. And that's the thing. The Lime Bay was very good value. Lime Bay 
when they were doing the offer around Christmas, it was like eight pounds a bottle. That was amazing. I think if they did eight pounds a bottle again, like I would have to go buy like before. I I did that, didn't I? When they started doing the eight pound a bottle thing, I bought like ten bottles at once. Mm-hmm. But now it's gone back to twelve pounds, and I'm still buying Lime Bay Mead because it is a great mead. Um, but I'm not buying as many. Yeah, and I think that's the thing. Like, um, this is one of the biggest issues with mead. Um, not cheap alcohol. It's not at eight pounds. You could probably justify it at twelve. It's a great drink, but you can't just tell people to buy loads of bottles of it. No, there's like. You know, you can get bottles of vodka for that. You can get bottles of whiskey for that. You can get bottles. Of, you can get probably get about three bottles of wine for that. The thing with vodka and whiskey as well, spirits last a lot longer because spirits don't go off. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if mead does go off like a wine does. I know that wine oxidizes in about eight days. So after eight days of it being open, it's not good to drink anymore. But With a mead, I've had a mead where I'll open it and then a week later I'll go back to it and it still tastes fine. Yeah, I'm not not sure on that one either. But I do think in terms of value, though, you know, like your bottle of vodka could last you months. Mm. You drink mead quite fastly. I wouldn't want to leave a bottle of mead open for a month, though, because I feel like it would oxidise. Yeah, yeah, and, and... yeah, I don't think you could, it's so delicious. <laughs> no. Well, mead, the the Lime Bay one's about 15%. Yeah. And, you know, I can drink a whole bottle in a sitting, and then that'll do me for the night. That is enough alcohol for an evening. If you, if you want to, you know, get get drunk enough and have fun, one bottle of mead is the perfect amount of alcohol, I think. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think the thing, I, I think I've had more than one bottle, and it's fun. I think that me, you know, like, have you, you know, how like, different alcohols might get you different, like, you get wine drunk, you get different types of drunk. Mm. Alcohols don't always have the same effect, like, you get a different type of drunk. Mead has a very different effect. You get very, I feel like you get quite sleepy on mead. Yeah, mead. Because mead warms you as it goes in, doesn't it? And it, it gets you in this very comfortable state. And as you say, it, when you have some mead, one, you would be very happy to just go to bed and relax and go to sleep. Two, I feel like it's the alcohol that would make you the most sweaty <laughs> because of how hot it gets you. So it's probably... During the heat wave, day one, I drank some mead and I started overheating. Yeah. And I feel like mead works really great as a winter drink. Like if you have it on Christmas Day or over the winter period to warm you up, you'll be at the perfect temperature always. Yeah, I, I, I do think it is. I don't think it's not a summer drink though, because I think like that uh, Heligan Garden blackberry mead. Very refreshing thing. Very refreshing. Yeah, and maybe that's where drinks like Moon Honey come in. Because Moon Honey doesn't warm you up, doesn't get you hot like a Lime Bay or a yeah. Cornish Heligan Mead will. Yeah, it's very, very light. So maybe Moon Honey in the summer and more traditional meads in the winter. But then that's. I'm not saying you shouldn't have mead in the summer. I do. I still drink mead. Maybe just not during a heat wave. <laughs> Maybe have it at night before bed. I mean, that's probably a normal when you drink anyway. I think mm. the blackberry, uh, halibut mead, if you want a summer mead, I can say that's my summer mead. I'd also say the mint lion bay mead is very good for the Oh, garden mead. mead. Yeah. yeah. Mead. Pink. The tournament mead with ginger, that was nice. Summer mead. I think ginger mead. <laughs> One, if I had to put one in the se- if I had to put them in seasons, I would say have you, your mint one and your um, halogen berry one in the summer, the very refreshing, mm. and your moon honey, like you said, in the summer. And then as you go into the winter, 
Go to Lime Bay, original. Yeah. Go to Lime Bay, ginger, tournament mead. They're very refreshed. You know, they warm you up. Nidhogger, I think, makes you quite hot, more so than the Lime Bay. Yeah. I feel like if you're, you know, you don't want to put your heating on in the winter, down in a bottle of Nidhogger is probably the best way to keep warm. Perfect, because this winter, the price is quite high. Mm. And, like, what's cheaper, meat or any energy bills. So, and it makes it understandable why Vikings used to drink a lot of mead. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't talk a lot about Vikings. And I think I think we need a Viking special at some point. Because we do because Nidhogger is the Viking mead. We've never really spoke about Vikings in great deal. Like today, we spoke about pirates and we spoke about medieval mm. times. We spoke about trains. We spoke about a lot of things, but not much about Vikings. We've never really spoke about them. No, and. I feel like a lot of people would find that quite surprising for a show called Mead and Cheese, because yeah. a lot of people do see mead as the Viking drink. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, that means, in my view, that we should probably try and do a Viking special. Probably. We need, we need a head of Vikings, really. What what we need is someone Viking related. We did we did the pirate special today because we had Andy who wrote a book about pirates. Yeah. We don't really have anyone we know who is big on Vikings. I'm pretty sure the thing is you don't the thing is you don't really know what people are big on until you sort of ask them like and say, Oh, will you be not normal people would say, oh, I like Vikings. They sometimes have to bring that up themselves. Best thing we could do is get an actual Viking on the show. Yeah. Like, um, I was doing some research for one of my assessments at uni, and there are Viking festivals still going on up in, like, Shetland. And that's quite far. <laughs> For a Viking to travel. But I don't know where else they're doing these Viking festivals. And they have people, you know, they get dressed up in the full armour and gear every year. They send these boats off to burn that they've spent all year building. If we could get one of these Vikings on our show in the armour. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. It'd be perfect. Yorkshire have a Viking festival. They they drink mead. The Nidhogger mead is actually the number one mead in Yorkshire. Um, and that is, you know, the York-based mead. And it is the Viking mead as well. So maybe we go up to Yorkshire for a day. Yeah, maybe that should be like a little documentary sort of thing. Yeah, we do a York special. We could have like... I'd like someone to have like a guided tour, like Idiot Abroad. Mm. And we could sort of have someone show us around. That's the problem with Leicester, isn't it? And the East Midlands in general isn't a big mead base. Yeah. You go down south, you go to Cornwall and Devon, there's lots of mead. You go up to Yorkshire, and specifically in York, there's a lot of mead. In the Midlands, there's not really that big base for mead. Mm hmm. But that's what we're trying to change. We want me to be just as relevant here as it is in Cornwall and in Yorkshire. Yeah, I think I think it's important that we get that to. Um, I think I think that's really a lot of the time. I know it sounds stupid. I think we're on the frontier anyway. Mm. If we was in the north, if we was in Yorkshire, the shows in Yorkshire, we instantly have a base. Mm. You know. Part of our job will be already done, but that's not where we need to be. We need no. places where they don't know of me. This is a forgotten dream. Like this city, left the people have thrown out their bottles of mead because they don't see themselves. You know, they so we're here on the front line, changing the world. Yes, we are changing the world, and I do recommend this honey wine. To DMU students, go buy a bottle of this wine from the uni off license. Look for the B. Look for this B. Look for that B. Look for this B. Get the bottle. And while you're drinking this wine, 
Listen to mead and cheese. Listen to mead and cheese while enjoying a bottle of honey wine. And if you join our Discord, go find it. If you get, if you find five bottles of mead, yeah. we'll count it for the because we've recommended it. We, yeah, we'll count this. Mead, count it. Be on it. Mm-hmm. Put it in the Discord under the mead. Spotted mead, and if yeah. you point out five, you book with mead explorers. If you, yeah, if you spot any meads or honeyed wines in shops, put it on our Discord, and we might make you a mead explorer. Yes, that's definitely what we need to do. So, so yeah, I've been DJ Mead, and, I've been DJ. and thank you for joining us for this Gentleman's Club after show special. Of mead and cheese. Yeah. And we've made. Um. You know we've done we've done an extra bit of work for you today. We have. Um, yeah. Are we calling this the gentleman's club? I think we're calling it the uh, the Romanian honey wine plus other discussions after show special. They're not the gentleman's club. <laughs> We could call it the Gentleman's Hour. Gentleman's Hour. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. This has been Mead and Cheese. The Gentleman's Spot. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you for watching and listening. And then three, two, one.